Yesterday's game was a nail biter for the Nationals. And after two of the main players got acquainted on the field, Jose Guillen delivered his first home run since April 5th. But Albert Pujols registered the knockout punch, breaking a major league record in the process. Today, the Nationals try and put their best foot forward and gain a series split in St. Louis. Next on Massive. to dodge the weather in St. Louis. It's been raining just about all night, a good part of the morning, and now the sunny skies are out for the finale of this four-game weekend series between the Nationals and the Cardinals. And when you look back on this series, the Nats could have won an extra game or two than they have so far. Bob Carpenter and Tom Pachorek, it's not often you run into a talent like Albert Pujols, and he did yesterday against this club what he does best. You know the amazing thing about Albert Pujols, among the amazing things, Bob, is he doesn't need a strike to win a ball game or to hit a home run. You know, you talk about Barry Bonds and his command of the strike zone, but Albert Pujols' strike zone is from the top of his hat to his toes, and that's why he's so difficult to pitch to. Everybody says, well, you got to go around him. Well, you can't pitch around the guy. They've got good hitters behind him, plus the fact he doesn't need a strike to hurt you. So it was number 14 yesterday, a game winner, a new major league record for the month of April. He leads in all the big power guy categories in the National League. Now, this series has been a series of crazy starts. A lot of first inning Pratt falls and home runs. And uh, usually the team that makes the fewest mistakes first ends up winning the game. You know, it's amazing. You can lose the game in the first inning just as easily as you can win it. The Cardinals virtually won in the first inning with that three-run homer by Jim Edmonds. Game two, it was the Nats' turn. A two-run homer by Nick Johnson. And then Ryan Zimmerman contributed a two-run homer that inning also. So those two games were definitely decided in the first inning. And then you look at yesterday, you get Albert to hit a fly ball to right field. And it was kind of a Keystone Cops play right here. Two boots. They were able to score on Scott Spezio, who comes up with a sacrifice fly. Jose Guillen hit a home run to tie the ball game up. But then it was Albert Pujols once again delivering his seventh game winning RBI of the season already. There's a big positive for the Nationals we will take out of this series in the first three games. And that's the starting pitching. The Nats have been in the game every single day, and it all goes back to Thursday night with the rookie making his debut, Mike O'Connor. Mike O'Connor was not really dazzling, but he pitched five innings of shutout baseball, unearned run baseball. They did score the three-run homer in the first inning. Tommy Armas got the win in game two, and he was brilliant. And Levon Hernandez pitched the best game by far of the season. He had good command of his fastball and his slow curveball. Zach Day has given up 16 runs this year. Nine of them have been in the first inning of his starts with Colorado. You remember he was traded to the Rockies in the Preston Wilson deal last year, and the Nats got him Wednesday off waivers. He will bring his sinker into Bush Stadium today. Yeah, that's true. Zach, I've always liked Zach Day. I saw him pitch a great shutout against the Atlanta Braves a couple of years ago. The one problem he's had so far this year, Bob, is walk. So he's got to have to get him out in the first inning. In the first inning, we all know anything can happen. That's the way it's been this week. Now, Friday, I had a chance to sit down and have a talk with Albert Pujols. We're pleased to be able to bring that to you today. He'll address the possible home run record, and you'll meet the great Pujols when we come back to St. Louis. Welcome back to St. Louis, an old friend and uh, a guy who a lot of people think is the best hitter in the game right now. Albert Pujols joins us. Albert, talk about the start to your season. How's it going for you? How's it going for the Cardinals? Thank you very much. Uh, it's going pretty well right now. You know, it's a great start. Uh, myself and my teammates, I mean, we have a pretty good record so far. Of course, there were a couple of loss that, that we could have won, but uh, that's part of the game. And it's a long season. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And uh, the main thing is to come up every day, be ready to play, and uh, hopefully get a win. You've had a couple of opportunities in this ballpark to win ball games in the last at bat. Do you relish those opportunities when the game's on the line like that? Well, definitely. I'm a guy that I always say. It's like uh, Michael Jordan always said, uh, uh, when, when I need to make a, a, a two-pointer or when he won the basket, you know, and that, that's how it is. I always want to be in that opportunity. I love that opportunity. 
I don't think there's any pressure at all because it gave me more relaxed uh, because I know that the that guy is gonna pitch me tough and I just need to trust my hands and hopefully put a good swing like I have so far. And uh, that's the key of hitting every day. I go out there, just try to see the ball and put my best swing. Do people still come up to you and ask you about the homer you hit off Red Lidge in the playoffs? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have been talking about that. And uh, I told them, hey, that was last year. It would have looked better if we would have gone all the way to the World Series. But still, that's a moment that I was going to remember. But, hey, we didn't advance to the World Series, and they did. Even though they got swept, we got swept the, the year before that. But uh, they, they advanced to the next round. So to me, I looked at just like another home run. You know, I know it was a great moment, and it was great to bring that series back here to St. Louis, but we lost the, we lost the series, so uh, just another home run to me. You and your wife, Dee Dee, do a lot of great charity work for kids. Why do you do that? What motivates you to do that? Well, I think to me is uh, you need to give back to the community, not just here in the United States, down there in the Dominican Republic. Never forget where you come from. And you know me and yourself, you and me, and we're, we're brother in Christ, and uh, I believe in my good Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who could give me my life and die on the cross for my sins. And, um, you know, he's first, my family, my career, and I believe for reaching to kids and to the community uh, is, 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 is something that, that, that the Lord has put in my heart. And we started that foundation last year. We have done it really well. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks here, we're going to present the charity that we support with a big check. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully that, that it can help them out. But Definitely, it's, it's something that we have got in our heart and uh, giving back to the community. Are you going to break the home run record in April, or do you even care? I don't even care. I mean, uh, they, uh, there's a lot of talk talking. There's one more. You got six games left. Now you got three games left. I don't look at those numbers. You know me, Bob, right now for almost six years. I, I'm coming here every day, be ready to play, and try to help out my team to win. Uh, home runs and all that is great, but uh, if you don't help your team out to win, that, that's mean nothing because uh, – we make a lot of money, but at the same time, you want to win that championship ring, and that, that's that's what it's all about. Thanks for your time, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. All right. The great Albert Pujols here in St. Louis, and we're straight ahead. There are first pitch and the lineups as the Cards and the Nats get together. Well, look at this day in St. Louis. Looks like a great day for a Nats win and a split of this four-game series. The Nationals have played pretty well in the previous three in St. Louis. It's just... Those two little defensive mistakes, Ryan Zimmerman's on Thursday and Jose Guillen's last night, and the Nats could be looking at three out of four or even better here. Pujols has done his damage, and Tom, I think, you know, this ball club can gain a lot of momentum by winning this ball game today, heading to New York, and how do you feel about that with these keys to the game? Well, let's take a look at them. The sinker is the difference between night and day, and of course that is Zach Day, the sinker will ha give him a good outing today, or if he doesn't have it, he could be out of there very soon. Get on for Guillen. Guillen hit a, t a homer yesterday. Then get on for him this. Looks like he's starting to come around with the bat, Jose Guillen. Cardinals, soups on and off. Supan is coming off of a real good effort, but he has been real shaky in his other outings. Stand-in performances by the Cardinals this year. Boy, Tony La Russa likes to jumble that lineup. I'll tell you, he's got everybody playing. You never know when you get to the ballpark, if you're playing or where you're going to be hitting in the lineup if you're in there. Yeah, guys like Sotoguchi. By the way, the ex-national Gary Bennett is in the lineup today, and it was good to see Jose get the first home run since April 5th. That's the one he hit in New York in the 10th inning when the Nationals won their first game of the year, and then it was 62 at-bats before the next one. Well, that last one was impressive too, Bob, because it was an inside fastball because other teams since that first homer in New York have been pounding him inside. Well, he got to that inside fastball, and now he should get some pitches out over the plate that he likes. Well, here in St. Louis on Sundays, they bring a bunch of kids who love to sing. They have two different choirs out there. and One will do God Bless America, followed by our national anthem on a gorgeous day in St. Louis in front of a capacity crowd. In the league, and here's the Southwest Airlines Washington lineup. We will focus in on Jose Guillen, we had a couple of hits yesterday, breaking an 0 for 14. Good to see him finally power the ball out of the ballpark. Jose's been kind of uh, frustrated at trying to hit the ball out of the park and not able to do it, and he finally got a low line drive out of here yesterday. Some pretty good bats at the top and the bottom of the lineup right now. Jeff Supon has just now walked out to the hill, and Tom, he's a beatable pitcher, 
when you look at the rest of the Cardinal rotation because he's a sinker slider guy who has to hit his spots with pinpoint control and if he doesn't you can hit him pretty well. Yeah, but he's also a guy that won 16 games for these guys last year. 16 and 10 with a 357 earned run average, Bob. So he's he's a good one. He's a real good competitor out of the mound. You mentioned he doesn't have overpowering stuff. He is coming off of his best outing of the season against Pittsburgh. He won 6 to 3 working 7 innings giving up no earned runs. So that is something positive for him to build on. And we'll see if maybe we can get some couple runs in the first inning like they did on Friday night. St. Louis defensively with Scott Rowland still out at third base and Spezio the call today against a right handed pitcher Zach Day Rodriguez gets the call over to Gucci and left and the switch hitter Aaron Miles plays second and of course Gary Bennett the former national will be behind the plate handling Jeff Supon. Scott Spezio's had an interesting series he's driven in some runs and done some damage defensively to the Nationals as well. Well for now the rain has gone. I can see clearly now. And here we go with the first pitch of the game. Jeff Supon to Alfonso Soriano, and he's hitting 320. Beautiful, cool day in St. Louis. 63 degrees underway at 218 Eastern. And Soriano takes one off the plate 2 0. Alfonso sits safely in 14 of his last 15 games. At a 343 clip. Should get something to work with here. Fastball is Ooh. a high strike. We'll have to get used to the very slow strike calls of crew chief Tim McClellan today. He's one of the slowest calling umpires in baseball. Soriano pops it up right side. Looking at it, Juan Encarnacion. <laughs> Top of the order has been getting it done. Look at those guys hitting almost 370 since the middle of the month. And in one run games, the Nats fell to one and five yesterday. Not many teams above the Nationals in that category. And the first inning follies continue. Hopefully, Zach Day will go out and Put a zero on the board today. He has struggled in that department. There's Jose Vidro. Adding thir 333 left handed. Jose has a pretty impressive streak in progress right now. He has gone 51 at bats and 58 plate appearances without striking out. Supon falls behind his second consecutive batter, 2-0. And, oh, and that's outside ball three. Hmm. All fastballs he's thrown so far. And not really good ones either in the mid-80s. Jose Vidro, three for 12 in the series. And Nick Johnson is next. And that's a one-out walk. The Nats have a base runner. Johnson and Guillen, the next two. Nick Johnson went 0 for 5 yesterday. And it was almost caused for the Washington print media to stop the presses. It had been a long time since that happened. Well, he Last August 3rd in this ballpark. Isn't that something? Well, I'll tell you what, he scalded two balls to center field yesterday, though. He could have just as easily gotten two hits. Short lead by Vidro. And Supon gets the call on the outside corner. Nick, 3 of 12 in the series. Did most of that damage here on Friday night. St. Louis starts the day 16 and 8. They're a game behind Cincinnati in the central. And that's a high strike 0 and 2. Cincinnati by the way hosting Houston again. Taylor Buckholtz and Elizardo Ramirez. who pitched pretty Ooh. well against the Nationals earlier this week and Houston leads at 3 nothing in the fourth. As I mentioned Atlanta 4 Mets 3 
in the bottom of the third. Phillies are trailing in the fifth inning to Colorado 2-1. Johnson behind in the count 0 and 2. Outfield deep straight away. Edmonds the shallowest of the three outfielders. And Nick gets jammed and flares it out to right center cruising for it. Encarnacion two outs. They're having quite a race in that division. Cincinnati has won six in a row. Houston and St. Louis playing well. They just can't get on top of the division right now. Even the Cubs and the Brewers are above the 500 mark. They don't call it the Comedy Central this year. No, they don't. Pittsburgh's the only team that's struggling, and they kind of revamped their team, new manager, and Jim Tracy, and they've got some better players than they had last year, so they'll come on a little bit. And here's Jose Guillen, who got his only two hits of the series yesterday, a second-inning single and a fourth-inning home run. Jeff Supon's been known to give up the long ball. This season, though, he's kept it in the park better than most of his time in St. Louis. Two home runs in 20 innings. But if he's not hitting his spots, guys can tee off. Well, he's only thrown fastballs so far to the first three hitters. He has yet to show any type of off speed. Tom mentioned his 16 and 10 last year. 16 and 9 the year before that. Both of them by a wide margin career highs. Jose Guillen has liked matching up with Jeff Supon in his career. Supon's previous high 10 wins for the Royals and the Pirates on three different occasions. And Guillen taps it down to third. Scott Spezio. Pujols digs another one out of the dirt. The Nats get a one out walk and that's it for the top of the first. Zach Day. Welcome back Zach. Bottom of the first coming up, St. Louis 11th in the league in hitting, 5th in runs. And the Cardinals will have this Southwest Airlines starting lineup today. Scott Spezio has had an interesting series. And over his last five games, he's 7 for 16, filling in very ably for the ill Scott Rowland at third base. He had two hits yesterday, two for two with a sacrifice fly and a walk. So Spezio in this series is four out of eight with three RBIs. Now he's a good guy that to have signed in the offseason. Abraham Nunez played great for these guys. He went over to Philadelphia. They bring in Spezio, and they really haven't lost a beat. Zach Day, Stephen Zachary Day, claimed by the Nats on waivers this past Wednesday. And the Nationals, of course, in sort of an emergency starter situation. They have gotten through this series to this point quite well with all the injuries. Maybe Zach keeps it going today. You can hope so, yeah. Hopefully that sinker will be working today. That's the key. Defensively, the Nats with Marlon Bird. He earned another day of playing time with three base hits yesterday. Zach Day misses away. David Eckstein with an on-base average of 404 to go with his 319 batting average. And as we mentioned last night, this guy's hitting David Eckstein, right at 40 points or so above his career batting average. Three for nine with a couple of runs scored in this series. But he's always on base. He's either getting hit, walking, hitting one hard, finding a way to get on base, and letting Pujols hit with a runner on every first inning. High strike, and Day gets it in there. You always wonder when he's coming up. <laughs> oh no, you know when he's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder how far he's gonna hit it. John Rodriguez next to then Albert Pujols. 2-2 two -two to Eckstein. Zach Day challenged him. Zach has a major league career record of 20 and 24. The ERA 4.66. Today is his 82nd major league appearance in the 56th time he has started. And he's pitched twice against St. Louis in his career. Once a start and he's 1-0 with a .9 ERA. Eckstein, a tough guy to strike out even though he's done that. In this series, 
on three different occasions. Some late movement on that pitch and a pop fly to left center. Soriano gets there and catches it right in the pocket of his glove for the first out. Yep, you saw most of that ball. I <laughs> had it all the way. Sure he did. Routine fly ball. Yeah. Here's John Rodriguez. It's raining in Chicago. Milwaukee and the Cubs trying to get started there. And I made a little boo-boo earlier. It's Florida trailing at home to Colorado, 2-1 to one in the sixth. My mistake. The Phillies are at Pittsburgh, and they lead 4-0 in the third. Out of play to the left side. The Nats start the day at 8-16, and, and that's only one game behind Atlanta and Philadelphia, who are both tied for second. The Braves have lost five in a row, and the Phillies have lost their last three. Isn't it incredible? Last year, everybody was at least 500 in that division overall in the season. Carlos Beltran has a homer in that game at Atlanta, but as mentioned, the Braves lead the Mets 4-3. New York 16-7, and, and they've won four straight now. Rodriguez, opposite field, base hit. And now they have a man aboard for Albert Pujols. franchise that has had a great tradition of Hall of Fame players and if this guy just keeps on doing what he has been doing he will be the next possibly the best too maybe the best ever you're right rips it to third Jeez. wow what a pick by Zimmerman <laughs> Pedro turns it and that's how you get Pujols on a double play if he scorches one right at somebody what a great play by Ryan Zimmerman Around the horn go the Nats with the double play and the first inning over in a Albert Pujols grounds into a double play for only the second time this year. That ball was absolutely blistered. Look at the swing. Just drops the head on a low fastball. See, when he hits a low pitch, he just bends his knees a little bit, but the hands stay up throughout. Well, that's the, about as easy a double play. Once Ryan Zimmerman caught the ball, I can't even believe he saw it. Now Zimmerman leads off and takes a strike in the top of the second against Jeff Supon. Overcast skies, combination of that and sunny skies. Some of the banks of lights are on here, some are not. I guess the computer looked at the conditions here and determined that the right field bank of lights should be on, but not those in left. What will they think of next? Oh and two to Zimmerman. Supon throwing strikes so far. He fell behind the first couple batters of the game. Came back to get Soriano, but he walked Vidro. Nick Johnson flied out. Guillen bounced out. And the Nats are looking for their first base hit. And that was after Zach Day had an 11 pitch first inning. Yeah, Supon just looks like he's throwing all fastballs, changing speeds on the fastball, throwing a four seamer, little sinker. And almost a BP fastball, about 84 miles an hour at times. Zimmerman, he got jammed slightly, hits it a long way. See you later. one nothing Nats into the bullpen. His fourth of the year, second of this series. Wow, he got his hands in. Led with that front elbow, and there's some happy teammates. Way to go, Ryan. That was an 84-mile-an-hour pitch, which makes me think it was a slider that hung. It was up, middle of the plate. Ryan Zimmerman did not miss it. Watch his swing right here. Gets his hands in. See how close they got in? Left, cleared that front side. And it's hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Ryan Zimmerman with his third RBI of the series. The Nats lead 1-0. And here's Marlon Bird, who had three hits yesterday. Well, now the home run stroke has shown up for Zimmerman. He went three weeks in between homers, and now he has found that stroke. And by the way, they just have fired up the lights up in left field. The last tower in the sequence here. Kind of a 
tricky day weather-wise. They want to light this field up as well they can so the Nationals can see the ball real well here in the second inning. And now Marlon Byrd has his fourth base hit in his last five at-bats. He started the day yesterday hitting 189. He's got to be well over 260 right now. He's at 262. Here's Brian Schneider, who's driven in three runs in the series. A modest three-game hitting streak for Brian. One hit each of those games, but he's starting to show some signs of life offensively. He went up hacking and fouled it. Now, Supon so far has not thrown anything with any downward-type movement. It's kind of surprising. He's been going... Just basically with that fastball, trying to change speeds on it. Nobody out. Top of the second, a homer by Zimmerman, a bird base hit. Schneider, ground ball, Pujols. Off the backhand side, they still have a play, and that will go 3-4-3 three, three, as Aaron Miles pounced on it. Yeah, Brian Schneider doesn't run well. Pujols may have hit off the heel of his glove. On a tricky hop. Yes, it did. The Cardinals were very fortunate that bounced right towards Miles. Watch Albert right here. Yeah, he could have got in front of that one, I think. But he was thinking about making a double play on it. Get himself in the throwing position a little early. Yeah, that little deflection probably saved him from his first error yeah. of the year. Here's Royce Clayton with the runner in scoring position now. One out. Royce having a discussion with Tim McClellan. He was in his 24th year umpiring in the major leagues. He's the biggest guy in the field, too. <laughs> Clayton takes one right in there from Supa. I like Tim McClellan as an umpire. You know, you say about his late calls, Bob, and I like it. I like to yeah. think that he's thinking that he's made sure that, that that's the right call. Yeah, a lot of people don't like his style, but he is considered... A very good ball and strike. Darn umpire. right. He's one of the better umpires around. Zupan working slowly here. Clayton waiting. Outfield around to the right. With that in mind, Supon pitches him outside and the counts one and one. Jeff Supon, 31 years of age, 6'2, 220. And that's on the outside corner. A strike in the upper part of the zone. And Clayton has to protect now on one and two. How about the Tigers? They're up on the Twins again today. Six nothing <laughs> in the seventh. Amazing those Break them up. That is amazing. They're 15 it? and nine. Every time they lose two in a row, Jim Leland will kick them in the behind and they'll be okay for the next week. He's been no nonsense with those guys. That's Kenny Rogers on the mound for the Tigers today. Supon puts one in the dirt. Good take by Clayton. The count's 2-2. Rays over the Red Sox, 3-1 in the fifth. Yankees trail 1-0 at home to the Blue Jays in the fifth. By the way, that's Kurt Schilling pitching for Boston and trailing to Scott Kazmir. David Ortiz has hit his 10th homer. Zach Day in the on-deck circle. And a 2-2 to Clayton with one out. He had a good idea for right field there. Oakland 2, Kansas City 1 in the second. And Baltimore 3, Seattle 1, bottom of the third. White Sox at Angels later. They designed a fancy new scoreboard here. And uh, at one point it didn't have enough room for all the scores. Oh. <laughs> Some details just get overlooked. When they you're did have enough for your little commercial, the Carpenters Union. <laughs> they helped build this park. <laughs> yeah, darn right they did. A little bit outside, three and two. Another long count for Supon. Here you are. That's my favorite sign right there. <laughs> St. Louis is a big-time union town. 
They worked 24 7 on this ballpark for over a year. That's how they got it ready. Yeah. Uh, 24 hours a day for over a year. I can't believe they got it done so quickly. Three and two. Clayton takes it outside. Ooh. The Nats have another runner. Second walk of the day for Jeff Supon. It'll bring up Zach Day. We've seen Albert Pujols play some real good defense in this series. Oh, yeah, he can pick it. See, he doesn't commit too early on any throws. Another one right there. And there's the last one, that lollipop that Israel Housen threw him. I've never seen a pitcher look more unhappy after a save in my life yeah. than Jason Isringhausen well, did yesterday. Well, he had to realize there was a lot of luck involved. Every once in a while, that'll happen for you. Now, here's Zach Day. First and second, one out. Interesting call by Frank Robinson here. Normally, a pitcher would try to sacrifice those runners to second and third. You're reluctant to head it. Let an 061 career hitter swing away and maybe bounce into two. Well, I think he's got a better chance of uh, getting him over than just driving him in, that's for sure. Pujols is already about 70 feet oh, away. They, they got the wheel play on already. Spezio, yeah. Eckstein really over toward third. Yeah. Ball has popped in the air. Yeah. There were no fielders in position to get in behind a base runner. And Zach Day can't do the bunt job. Well, that's exactly what Tony La Russa, I've seen him do this a thousand times. He'll just charge those corner guys and make them swing the bat if they're going to get. And Zach Day just pops it up. That's such a, an easy play. But look at these guys. Look at them coming. These two guys are within 10 feet of them as that ball is popped up in the air. Yeah. And there's, there's nowhere to bunt it, really. But if you swing, now you've got the whole field available to you. That's baseball's version of a zone defense yeah. right there. Supon like, coming down the middle, Spezio from the left flank, and Pujols from the right. Well, I, I guess you could call those corner blitzes, too. Yeah. <laughs> as long as we're into analogies yeah. to other sports. Hey, here's Soriano, popped up to right first time, and a chance for a big two-out hit here. Alfonso having a pretty good series. Kind of a quiet six for 13, though. It's about time this guy popped one. Tell you what, Supon's already given him about five fastballs. You don't see that very often. Another one, that was a sinking fastball. He took something off of that one. Two seamer. Wind is blowing out toward left today. It's coming right up the Mississippi River and blowing to the north and anything to left field is going to carry well. Off speed. Did he go? No, says Marty Foster at first. I think Soriano was ready to kill that thing, but it just got too down on it. Yeah, that was first change up he's thrown real slow, slow. You see him trying to hesitate, keep those hands back. And he did just enough. He didn't go through with the swing. Now I the like rain. pitch. Now like the that. rain's coming down in St. Louis. And it's coming down briskly. Soriano. And he fouls one. It counts 2-2. Two, two. Well, we got to the ballpark yesterday morning. They said it might rain until Tuesday. We got the ball game in yesterday. A snappy two-hour and 22-minute affair. Now we got it started today, but the rain is pelting down at the moment. You know, there's nowhere to hide too from the for the fans. Yeah, not a lot of cover here. Everything's out in the open. Two two. Soriano takes a change up in the dirt. Gary Bennett keeps it close enough. Bird staying at second. Clayton at first. Dark skies approaching from the west here. And fans looking for cover. Three, two runners will be moving. Lots of things happening here, and hopefully another run or two. Fly ball, right field. Looking into the rain, Encarnacion at the line, and he grabs it. And the Nationals, who stranded 11 runners yesterday, have already left three. Ryan Zimmerman led off with a homer, his fourth, and the Nats lead it. One
Rain still coming down hard. One nothing Nationals. We go bottom two. And hey, for a Sunday at RFK Stadium, how about the Pepsi Family Four Pack? Four Upper View outfield tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, four bags of chips, only $49. Food and baseball fun with the Pepsi Family Four Pack. Sundays at RFK. Go to nationals.com or call 888-632-NATS. And after you do, use the code Pepsi4. Zimmerman on a hot shot right off of Zach Day. It'll go 1-5-3. And here comes various members of the dugout, led by Mike McGowan, the assistant trainer, followed by the pitching coach and the skipper. Oh, brother. This thing was scalded. I don't know if I got him on the hip side or whatever he stood there <laughs> that hit him square on to the ball fortunately for the Nats bounces right over the Zimmer and so they get the one five three out and we cannot be too far from a stoppage of play here if this rain keeps up it is really coming down hard yeah now I'm that the game has started it is Tim McClellan's call the crew chief and he's working the plate today he will observe Zach Day along with Frank Robinson here already covered the home bullpen mound now the Nationals themselves will take care of that out there I guess the ground crew tells the visiting team you're on your own boys yeah, if you want a good mound for later on actually I hope fortunately that did not hit Zach in the arm I don't think it did anyway I'm hopeful that it I'm thinking it hit him in the hip the right hip that was a rocket off the bat of Jimmy Edmonds another look and let's see, slow mo. Did he hit his hand? Did his arm? I think block? he got his hip. I think he just got his arm out of the way. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That's a good place to get hit. Little chopper on the first pitch to Spezio. Vidro throws him out for a quick second out here in the bottom of the second. See, that ball could hit me there, and I wouldn't even feel it. <laughs> that little padding, extra padding, you know, full figure guys have. Uh -huh. <laughs> Might have stuck in there too. Here's Encarnacion with bases empty, two outs. The Nationals have kept him in check. He's one for nine in the series, and this guy's really scuffling, hitting 212. They were counting on him to do what he had done on a couple of stops in his major league career. This guy has a career batting average of right around 270. Yeah, 287 last year for Florida with what 16 homers, 80 RBIs for that team. So that's what they were looking for. They're not getting it. Rain really coming down. A little lightning in the distance now. The weather here approaches from beyond the third base side from the west. There's thunder in the distance and it's getting closer. I wouldn't be surprised to see a stoppage as soon as they get the third out. Uh -oh. Is this the third out or is it a home run? The game is tied as Encarnacion has a little thunder of his own. Boy, when he hit that, I didn't think it was going. Apparently, he hit it hard enough. And sometimes a homer like that, or even a base hit like that, can get a guy out of a slump. Opposite see, field. Yeah, see the pitch is up though. Zach's got to keep the ball down on him. He's a high ball hitter. Goes with the pitch very nicely. Didn't try and pull it. That was the secret to his success right there. I don't know if Guillen could have caught that ball had he gotten back to the eight foot wall sooner. But Jose was fooled by that as well. Now, yeah, I don't think he would have gotten. I think it got over there about five, six feet. But Tim McClellan must know something that nobody else knows. I think he's waiting for the third out. Trying to get the inning completed. That ball out of play to the right side by the ex national Gary Bennett, who hit 221 for our ball club last year, 21 RBIs in 68 games, 199 at bats. And he told me on Thursday that he wanted to wish our fans well, and he really enjoyed his playing time with Washington last year. Fought off a jam job there and got a base hit at Shea Stadium out into left center. 
Gary Bennett, veteran guy, 34 years of age. Cardinal signed him as a free agent December 5th. Rain has slowed, but still very steady. The umpires consult closely with the home team in these situations. They have all kind of radar set up downstairs. They can tell exactly what the National Weather Service can tell you. This ball is well hit, but it's slicing into the corner. And it's three and two. Gary Bennett originally drafted by the Phillies back in 90. He was with Philadelphia the better part of seven seasons. The Mets, the Rockies, the Padres, and the Brewers before joining the Nationals last year. 3-2. Now Day didn't feel comfortable. The hitter had stepped out. Gallagher with a fastball up the middle Clayton to his left and on the run throws out the St. Louis catcher the Cardinals tied the game in the bottom of the second on a two out solo by the team's trade solo homers in the second one one as we go to the third you can collect a series of three bobbleheads as you join the Nats throughout the season the first one is Saturday June 10th the Nats take on the Phillies it'll be Chad Cordero take home the chief on the 10th of June, visit nationals.com to purchase tickets and check out the full list of Nationals promotional dates. Off-speed pitch, Vidro pops it up right center, and Carnacion there for the first down. Nick Johnson, Jose Guillen, the next two national batters. Evidently, Tim McClellan knew that the rain was going to slow down in the next few minutes. Yeah, that was amazing because it was coming down real hard there for a while. Nick Johnson. Oh, for his last nine suddenly. He had two hits in his first two at bats on Friday night and was absolutely raking the ball, hitting right around 400. And all of a sudden, the last two and a half games have been pretty rough for him. Supon misses low and inside 2 0. Oh. Supon looks like he wants to throw a few more curveballs and change ups now, getting away from his fastball, which he used almost exclusively those first two innings. Well hit, right side, picked off by Aaron Miles, and he throws out Nick Johnson. Good play by Miles. Ball hit very hard by Nick, so he's lined out. That 0 for 10 is very misleading. He's lined out a few times. Got a big hop, though. He got a little lucky there. Jeff Supon with a chance for a quick third. Jose Guillen, 2 for 14 in the series. The Braves have added a couple. Top of the fifth at Turner Field. Atlanta six, Mets three. Houston has added a run at Cincinnati. And the Astros lead three nothing in the sixth. The Mets and the Reds are trying to sweep those respective series. They're underway in Chicago. The rain has stopped. Brewers and the Cubs just underway. Philly still lead the Pirates in the fourth, four nothing at Pittsburgh. And the Marlins trail at home two one to the Rockies. They're in the seventh. There's the rookie home run hitter, Ryan Zimmerman, on deck. Starting to find that power stroke, Tom, starting to drive the ball much better. Yeah, he's getting his hands in on that inside pitch. He's not so vulnerable in there. Guillen gets jammed down to Spezio, who got behind that ball. He hardly ever throws one on target to Pujols, and Albert keeps bailing him out. Pujols is a moving target over there for Spezio. <laughs> and a 1-2-3. Bottom of the third 1-1 one, one game in St. Louis. Nats trying to get a split of the series. Tom Glavin finally beats the Braves in Atlanta. He had never done that. 
until that happened yesterday. He's had a bad career record against his ex ball club. Kevin Mensch continues his hitting streak. Did not hit a homer though yesterday. Jose Contreras continues to be unbeatable for the White Sox. Well, he's got great stuff. You know, you look at that fastball and that great splitter. He's on. He's really tough to beat. And, you know, it's a lucky thing that Shrek nickname didn't stick, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Shrek watch. Zach Day against Aaron Miles and then the pitcher here in the third. Royce Clayton has to go to his right. He'll backhand it and out. Oh. On a close play at first. Miles, a switch hitter who runs well, and from the left side of the box, he got out very quickly. Yeah, and Royce did the best he could. He felt like backhanding it and getting himself in that position would allow him to make a strong throw rather than charge and make an off balance play. Oh, that was really close. That's half a step. Good pick by Nick Johnson. Yep. Looks like they got him. Marty Foster over there. Here's Soup on the batter, 0 for 6 this year. And a pretty decent career hitter at 183. He homered in this ballpark last September against Steve Traxel. And the entire dugout just about fell flat on their faces. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. This went right at the center fielder, Marlon Byrne, and that's three in a row now for Zach Day. Who came into this inning with only 22 pitches, 11 in each of the first two? You're looking at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. They'll have their other 4,000 seats ready in about a month. Bob and Tom with you on Masson today on a day when we're ducking in and out of rain showers here in downtown St. Louis before the Nats get on the plane tonight and head for Shea Stadium to play the Mets a couple. And we'll give you those pitching pairings as we move along. Two outs, bases empty. David Eckstein. No complaints about the starting pitching in this series so far. No, three very good efforts, starting with Mike O'Connor on Thursday night, five innings, no earned runs. Of course, three unearned runs that led to the defeat. Ramon Ortiz and Victor Zambrano tomorrow night. We'll join you at 7 on Masson, same time Tuesday, for Mike O'Connor and John Main. Down to third, Zimmerman gobbles it up aggressively toward the line. And Zach Day gets a couple of ground ball outs. He has had seven of those so far in the. On to the top of the fourth. 1 1 game because of solo homers. And a look at our game summary will show you what Ryan Zimmerman's done with the glove. He turned an amazing double play on Pujols and a ball that was absolutely scorched. That was to end the first. And then he was the leadoff man minutes later and hit number four into the bullpen to give the Nats their one nothing lead. Marlon Bird has another base hit four out of five for him the last two days and Juan Encarnacion tied the game in the second with an opposite field solo homer with two outs. So it's Zimmerman Bird and Schneider for the Nats here in the fourth. Supan catches the outer half with strike one. Now the Reds have picked up a couple. They weren't going to be shut out by Houston today, were they? 3-2 Astros top of the seventh at Cincinnati. And Supon tried an off-speed breaking ball, and Zimmerman didn't get fooled at all. That was a hanging curveball. So that's just exactly how you're supposed to hit that pitch. You stay back and hit a line drive that's just to the right of the second baseman. You know you've taken a perfect swing on a pitch. Watch a little bit of a hang time he creates right here. He recognizes it, stays back. Well, that was good hitting. That chin went from that front shoulder to his back shoulder very nicely. Ryan Zimmerman now hitting 247 with his two for two today. Here's Marlon Bird, whose average is really on the rise from 189 yesterday to 262 right now. Lead off man aboard here in the fourth. That's the lead run. This one gets away. Zimmerman got a great jump, and he can go into second standing up. Wild pitch for Supon. Gary Bennett couldn't keep it close enough. 
Great instincts by Zimmerman right there. As soon as that ball hit the dirt, he was off. Because Bennett does a good job of blocking it. It just goes a little bit farther than he had anticipated. But right there is Ryan. That's good. You know, if you did that every time the ball hit the ground, you'd probably make it to second base at least well, somewhere around 85 to 90 percent of the time. Now the runners at second, nobody out, and the count is 2-0. and oh. Bird goes the other way. Pujols is way off the bag. It's a race to the bag, out on a close play. As Supon got there in time to beat Bird. But a good hitting job by Marlin, almost getting a base hit and moving the runner to third with one out. What a great play all around. Great job by Marlin Bird, giving himself up and tr trying, almost getting himself a base hit in the process. Well, his teammates will appreciate that. You see Pujols get, knocks himself out of the play, but Miles with a good throw to a moving target right there. That was a good job by Supon as well. So everybody did their job on that particular play. Here's Schneider with a great chance to put the Nats on top. Infield creeping in now as Supon goes to the stretch. Tony La Russa does this with his defense a lot. He'll play them back or halfway, and then the middle infielders will run straight forward as the pitcher comes home. Yep, he's a trickster, all right. And the way you beat that is just lift the fly ball over everybody and get yourself an RBI. Now the count's 2-0 oh again. Well, he might be going around Snyder with Clayton and the pitcher coming up next. Who would you rather pitch to, Snyder and Clayton or Clayton and the pitcher? Ooh. He likes to hit against Supan. Still does. Line drive RBI for <laughs> Schneider. This one down into the corner deep. Ryan will make the turn and stay. And Schneider collects his fourth RBI of the series. The Nationals lead two to one. Well, now he's a 500 hitter career against Jeff Supon. Boy, he got a fastball up. That's a good job, Ryan, by Brian to turn on an inside fastball. That's good. He had been having a lot of trouble. Getting his hands up above the ball, keeping that back shoulder up. But he did a nice job there. Wicked line drive for an RBI single. Yeah, they chose to pitch to him, and here's Clayton, still only one out. Royce Clayton walked his first time up with Marlon Bird aboard back in the second. The Nats stranded two runners there. They have plated their only runner in scoring position here. Out hitting the Cardinals so far, four to two. They out hit St. Louis and losing two to one, nine to five yesterday. Out hit them ten to five on Friday, and in the six-two loss Saturday had six hits to St. Louis eight. So the Nats have kind of bounced back pretty well from that five-nothing shutout loss at the hands of the Reds on Wednesday afternoon that had us concerned about their offense. Now the Cardinals aren't swinging the bats at all. They got to feel like they're pretty lucky to be two and one in this series. Sure do. Tony wearing his glasses today. Yep. Always. Doesn't <laughs> want the other manager to see where his eyes are looking. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Barry Weinberg is giving the steal sign. <laughs> Little tapper by Clayton goes foul. <laughs> that used to be one of our, one of his little ploys. I, I'm sure he's the not. The trainer? A, yep. Well, it wasn't Barry Weinberg. It was Herm Schneider back then with the White Sox. There's, There's Barry. Barry. Yeah. What are you doing, Barry? Is he going across his chest or anything, picking his ear? He might be giving a sign. <laughs> I doubt it. Ball and two strikes to Clayton with the pitcher on deck. And a pretty good rip by Royce, making Supon work here in the fourth. He's well up over 50 pitches on the day. Right now, through three innings of work, Zach Day is only at 29. And of his nine outs, he has registered seven on ground balls. Yeah, that's big. That'll tell you that. Zach can pitch if he throws ground balls like that because you know he's got that sinker down. If he can keep the ball down and throw strikes. 
One two again Clayton strokes one into right field. Didn't try to do too much with it took it right back from where it came. And the Nats now have three hits in the inning first and second one out and Zach Day will get a chance to bunt again which he yeah. did unsuccessfully back in the second. Maybe he'll try and swing this time. Fourth inning time for some trivia from our good friends at. Major League record for homers in any single month, not just April. So it could be Pujols with his 14, but maybe not. Mm. It's 15 or 16. It could be McGuire. Zach Day showing bunt again. Switches Adam off, boy. and he swings. That ball's into right field, and the runners stay home. Well, he made the Cardinals work for that out. You're darn right. The whole field was open, and if Encarnacion isn't playing second base right there, he doesn't make the play. I like it. It was almost impossible to get a bun on. Boy, that was a good butcher boy right there. But you can see Encarnacion playing very, very shallow, and he does have good speed. It's up to Soriano again. Alfonso's hit the ball in the air twice. Identical situation back in the second he popped up to right field. So he said two fly balls out to Encarnacion. Tom and I were talking after that half inning. Tom felt like I did that Soriano was just ready to rip one somewhere. Yeah. He we still feel that way. I, I feel exactly that way right now. This is a good matchup for him. A pitcher who doesn't throw that hard. That's foul fortunately into the glove of Spezio. You know, the one thing about Supon, he's going to give you a fastball to hit every time you go up there. You just got to be ready for it and nail it. A run home on the Schneider hit following Zimmerman single and a wild pitch. Two on, two out. That was a good pitch right there. He ran that sinker in on his hands. He's thrown a couple curveballs that he's gotten hurt on, so he might stay away from that pitch. Royce Clayton hit a hanger, so did Zimmerman. Ryan scored the Nats run early in this inning, and that was a good job of base running, too, by Zimmerman, going from first to second on that wild pitch that wasn't so wild. Soriano has not homered in this series. 0-2. That ball hit his foot. So why aren't they taking that ball out of the game? Ah, now they are. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was watching this earlier. You know, a guy foul tips a ball. They throw it out of the game. Yeah. On Zimmerman's base hit up the middle, it hit in the grass. They threw it back in. That ball stayed in. Yeah. Well, How I, do they decide? I don't know. Well, the umpire probably had no say. They probably got it in there to the pitcher quickly. Had a little grass stain on it. Yeah. Maybe a nice little feel to it. Pitchers love that. Oh, yeah. The 0-2 again. Soriano mm. didn't get it. Change it. Soriano has stranded four runners today. The Nats have left five. Schneider's RBI puts Washington on top. Bottom of the fourth inning. Rain coming down again here in St. Louis. Time to pay off our trivia from our great friends at record for the most home runs in any month of a baseball season. Well Tom thought Mark McGuire. Oh gosh. Sammy huh? 20 look at that. Oh my goodness. Sammy Sosa hit 66 the year McGuire hit 70. Albert God. Pujols was just wrapping up his junior college career at Maplewood Junior College up in the Kansas City area. Jeez, 20 homers in a month is unbelievable. I do remember it now. John Rodriguez, and there goes the bat. Clayton got his entire body behind that one, and he throws out John Rodriguez. Now Royce has been everywhere this ball game. He's a big part of the success of Zach Day. A lot of ground balls. That's what he needs. And by the way, the month of April is not over yet. Albert Pujols could conceivably take it to 15 or 16. I'd rather see him get May off to a good start against somebody other than the Nationals. The 
Cardinals go to Cincinnati for the next two days and mm. then a couple in Houston. <laughs> He'll so, hit a few. Yeah, how about that for the next oh, week? My. He may have he may have five or six the first week of May hitting in the Great American Ballpark and Minute Maid Park. Yeah. Zach Day's doing a good job of keeping the ball down, though. Zach has registered eight ground ball outs now of his first ten. And that's even better than his career ratio, which is very good. Today's a four to one ratio. His career is two point three to one ground ball to fly ball out. Well, Pujols has got the green light anytime he wants to swing. I'm sure of that. Right down the maybe, middle. Maybe he didn't want to swing. He probably doesn't like a 3 0. I don't know why he can hit anything. He can hit in his sleep. He's aboard with one out. Zach Day with his first walk. That'll bring up Jim Edmonds. That's Albert Pujols. Walking for the 25th time already this year. That ties him with Barry Bonds and Adam Dunn for the league lead. Edmonds lined the ball off the hip. Zach Day the first time turned it into a 1-5-3 put out did Ryan Zimmerman. Edmonds showing bunt. He'll do that occasionally. In fact, in the 04 World Series, Edmonds was one for 15. The one base hit was a bunt. He and Scott Rowland went one for 30 in that series. High fly ball, right field. It'll stay in the yard and hopefully in the glove of Guillen. He fires it in as Pujols had gone back to tag. Well played by Jose. And that's out number two. Oh, he just missed it. Got a little bit on the hands. Just a centimeter from putting a two spot on the board. Spezio next. <laughs> Gavin Floyd pitching for the Phillies today. Four nothing at Pittsburgh in the fifth now. Phillies and the Atlanta Braves are tied for second in this division. But they are seven games behind the Mets. And the Mets right now trail 6-4 at Atlanta, bottom of the sixth. Spezio bounced to second his first time. And a strike call. Zach Day with a good low strike, really using the lower part of the strike zone today. National starting pitchers have given up a grand total of four earned runs in this series so far. And this is game four. That's terrific, especially with the loss of John Patterson. For them to pick it up is really good to see. Now, this is Zach Day I remember right here. Working quickly, throwing low strikes. Outside, three and one to Spezia. Right-hander Encarnacion, who homered last time, is on deck. Bluff to break and Zach threw in behind him. I wonder if he was in motion over there. Pujo stole 16 bases last year, was caught only two times. And did he have a foot injury the entire year that he was battling? It, yeah, it goes back two years. He has yeah. plantar fasciitis. Oh boy, that's tough. That ball is ripped foul, three and two. Yeah, that's kept a lot of put a lot of guys on the disabled list. Not him though. How about that? Not too shabby. He might be the first guy with 100 steals and 800 home runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll get more than 100 steals. Should yeah. Three two, and now Pujols will be running. Nick Johnson playing close to him, and then he'll retreat. Taps the glove a time or two, and the pitch line to center. 
It'll drop in front of Marlon Bird. The Cardinals will have runners at first and third with two outs for their RBI man of today, Encarnacion. And for Scott Spezio, that's his fifth base hit of this series. Boy, Spezio's putting some good at-bats together, too. You know, taking pitches, working the count, and then getting himself some pitches that he can handle, like that one right there. In the falling rain a couple of innings ago. Yeah, that was one of the few pitches that Zach Day has gotten up, and that's the wrong guy to pitch up to. He is a high ball hitter. You got to keep him down. Throw the ball down at the knees. Generally speaking, you can have your way with Encarnacion. He rips it. Zimmerman again to his left. Out at second as Ryan Zimmerman continues to amaze with his glove at third base. Saves a run and a possible big inning for St. Louis. To the fifth inning we go. Amazing play by the rookie. And the Nats hold on. Two to one. What a costly year here Thursday night, but since then, Ryan Zimmerman, brilliant defensively. Boy, he did. He made a great play right here. Hanging slider to Encarnacion. That was a base hit and an RBI taken away from him, but he's got cat-like instincts over there. It's a great read on the ball. Strike one to Jose Vidro, top of the fifth underway. Rain is starting to ease off, and now it's brightening up here. <laughs> We've had about 15 different climates <laughs> since this morning. They have a saying here in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. Right. You'll get something different. Idril looks it all the way in. Supon misses low. Well, Vitro was out on one pitch his last time up, that real slow curveball. Supon is on. You see a lot of little topped foul balls, little tappers all over the place. He's had kind of a mixed day today, giving up five hits, a couple of hard shots, but a flare or two as well. The big hit, Zimmerman's homer back in the second leading off, and a very hard hit, Ryan Schneider. Base hit as Brian drove in Zimmerman. Ooh, back in the four. That time, Supon jams the left-handed batter. Good pitch right there. That was a slider. On to Shea Stadium tomorrow night, where the Nationals opened the season just four weeks ago. It'll be Ramon Ortiz who threw some of his best pitches, we thought, of the year Wednesday against the Reds. No question about it. He struck out six in a little over six innings of work. He only had two in 16 innings prior to that start. No, he had stuff going on. He changed speeds a little bit, too. Nick Johnson and a strike as Supon starting to spot his breaking ball pretty well. Eight to four Atlanta now. They've added a couple. They lead the Mets in the bottom of the sixth. Good tailing fastball. Jeff Francoeur has gone deep for Atlanta, his fourth of the year. After a horrible start, he didn't hit a lick for about the first two weeks. No, he didn't. And they're riddled with injuries still. Braves still trying to get all their guys back. Nick takes one off the plate. Ball one. Nick Johnson three for 14 in the series. Coming inside. Way off the plate. That was that same pitch he struck Vidro out on. It's like a good pitch for Supon against the lefty. You get it in there. What's he going to do with it? If he hits it hard, it's going to be foul. 2-2 two, two to Nick. Rolled over that one, and Miles will throw him out. And it's two outs, bases empty here in the fifth inning. Bob Carpenter and Tom Pachurik here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And Tom, the emerging story for the Nationals, I think, is how good now suddenly the starting pitching has been for the last four days. It's amazing, isn't it? There's been a couple of snafus in the first inning of this series, but overall, I think the pitching's been great. Looking forward to Mike O'Connor's second start at Shea Stadium. I'm glad he got that under his belt. Did yeah. very nicely. Five innings, and the rest of the guys coming along. And that started with Ortiz. Uh, that last game at RFK, he pitched very well. 
Nationals lost that game five to nothing. But it was a one run game into the fourth. And of course, Ortiz, part of his own undoing, throwing away a double play ball. Here's Jose. And Guillen gets jammed and flies one out to center. Looks like a one, two, three for Supon. First time he's been able to do that since the third and the second time today. And it happened against the same three hitters. A little overcast here in St. Louis today. We're still playing baseball, though. Bottom of the fifth inning. Nats lead two on. Hey, don't forget about the Potomac Nationals, Woodbridge, Virginia. Only 30 minutes from our ballpark at RFK. One dollar specials every Monday. Fireworks every Saturday. Season tickets, many plans on sale now for schedule and info, 703-590-2311. Or you can go to PotomacNationals.com. Potomac Nationals Minor League Baseball, it's fun to be a fan. You can also stop by their kiosk at RFK at any Nationals home game. Bottom three for the Cardinals here in the fifth. 45th pitch of the day by Zach Ooh. Day is popped up, and right there is Brian Schneider. Oh, that's big. That one pitch out. And, of course, he's got his bottom of the lineup, too. So you look for a 7, 8, 9, maybe have a low pitch inning. Get to that sixth. Save the bullpen a little bit. 45 pitches through four and a third for Zach. Jeff Supon is at 77 pitches through five. And this is Aaron Miles robbed of a hit on a good play up the middle by Royce Clayton. You know, Aaron Miles has a lot of man uh, mannerisms of an old teammate of mine, Wally Backman. Kind of the same look yeah, about him. Yeah, he does. Holds those hands low. Yeah, and Wally did too. I, I just was trying to figure out who he reminded me of, and it was definitely Wally Backman. How do you get over the top of a ball to drive it with that hand position? I don't know. I, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that for young kids. I'd like to start them high like Pujols does. Of course, I'd do everything Pujols does. <laughs> Follow him wherever and did, do whatever he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, suddenly after a one pitch out, Zach goes 3-0 and in the number eight hitter. You don't want to walk him and give the pitcher a chance to sacrifice. Oops. Second walk by Zach. One on, one out. Jeff Supon coming up. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Washington Nationals may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Jeff Supon flied to center first time up with one out, bases empty back in the third. Well, he's scoring around early. Zimmerman set to charge. Supon lays off, and it's ball one. First final of the day comes from Detroit, where the Tigers shut out Minnesota eight to nothing. And Detroit's now 16 and nine on the year. Pardon me, six nothing. Hit and run. Yeah, behind the runner. But Vidro was holding his position as Clayton was covering. Tell you what, Tony is very, Tony La Russa is very creative offensively. He knows that Supon swings the bat pretty well, and the Nats are looking for a bunt there. So he's just going to try and confound them a little bit. And he accomplished what he set out to get the guy in scoring position. This way he was giving him a chance to set up a pretty big inning. Yeah. In that Detroit game, Kenny Rogers, a two-hitter for eight innings. Then they shut out the Twins six to nothing. Two outs now. Eckstein, dangerous man here because he can put the ball in play. He's 0 for 2 today, 3 for 11 in the series. Out to short. Clayton gets behind it. He's got time. Whoa. It's safe as Eckstein beat the ball. Royce Clayton thought he had time, so did I, and he made his best throw. And David Eckstein just got down the line in great fashion. Yeah, he did. He did that. No, I don't think how Royce could have done any better than this. Ty goes to the runner. He just wasn't able to put a lot on that throw as he was moving almost the other direction. 
Look no, at that's, that. That's vintage Eckstein. Yeah. His body is in full panic emergency mode to go yeah. down that line you, exactly to try to right. get to that bag. Yeah, he's like frantic out on the field. Yeah. Two on, two out. Rodriguez. Got to get this guy. Got a one-run lead in Pujols next. And it's ball one by Zach Day. Yeah, this guy becomes the most important out of the afternoon so far. And the thing that hurts about this inning, Tom, the walk to the number eight hitter on four pitches after a one pitch out to the number seven guy. That's yep. why this inning is still in progress. Oh, boy. Well, Rodriguez already has a hit today. another same spot as his first one and the game is tied at two here in the fifth inning oh those walks at the bottom of the order yep and it's a 2-2 game now John Rodriguez second hit of the day fourth of the series and his fourth RBI now you have Albert Pujols that's amazing Boy, it's not a bad pitch either a sinker away Rodriguez just goes with it very nicely and he's wise not to try and go to second base. We want him to pitch the pool holes as Randy St. Clair is going to come out. But boy, Eckstein again. You know, normal guys out on that play, but Eckstein finds a way to beat, beat out that infield single to set up Rodriguez right there. And now the Cardinals have a chance to have a big inning. Before the Nets can start throwing, they have to take off the tarp themselves. John Wetland evidently relieved of his duties as the phone was ringing. Jason Bergman. He missed a scoreless sixth inning here on Thursday night in his only serious appearance. Pujols is 0 for 1 with a double play ball and a walk. A 2-2 game here in the fifth. And the ballpark is excited right now. That's a good running fastball by Zach Day for a strike. Didn't miss by much. Ooh. Totals are even for both teams. Two runs, five hits, no errors. Difference, Nats have left five, St. Louis two, and they have two aboard here in the fifth. <laughs> Left-handed Jim Edmonds next. Pick your poison, huh? Yep. There's a lot more poison in the batter's box right now. And on three and one, you would be shocked to see a fastball over the plate here. Unless it's a heavy sinker down around Pujol's knees. Yeah, he's going to have to spot something perfectly right here to get Albert out. Oops. Pujols walks. Now he leads the league in walks. Twice today, 26 on the year. And that's Zach Day's third walk of the day. The bases are loaded for Jim Edmonds. Frank Robinson had visions of an easy fifth inning here. After Gary Bennett fouled out on one pitch, Aaron Miles walked on four, and that just pushed that door open a bit. And then Eckstein's infield hit really put that thing ajar. Bases loaded, Edmonds 0 for 2 today. Up the middle with a base hit. St. Louis will lead by two. There's a play at third, but it's cut off by Clayton. And Jim Edmonds delivers.
Well, Edmonds was close all day. He lined one off of Zach Day his first time up, then he flew out deep to right field. And he finally gets centered one. Yeah, he just went down and got that one. That was about thigh high out over the middle of the plate. Eckstein followed by Rodriguez. Three of the last four batters with hits, a walk to Pujols in between. And it's now first and third for Spezio with two outs. And he singled last time up. Pulled the string on him a bit. And the count's 1-1. That one foul tip. Now the count's one and two. You got to find a way to get out of this inning. It's still just a two run deficit. Supan's not pitching that well, although he's gotten it back together a little bit better as this game goes on. Zach Day, this, Zach Day, pardon me, had averaged 11 pitches per inning, 20 this time. Yes. That is in there, and Spezio is gone. Eight St. Louis batters, three of them score. And after five now, the Cardinals have the lead for the first time today. St. Louis four, Washington. A big crooked number for St. Louis in the fifth, and a 4-2 Cardinal lead as Zimmerman, Bird, and Schneider are due up in the top of the sixth inning. Ryan Zimmerman's had a big day for the Nets. Defensively with the bat, couple of hits. He will lead off here in the sixth. And there are no hits from the top four batters in the lineup today. Yeah, Ryan's had two great plays defensively, starting a double playoff Pujols in the first inning. And he saved another run later on. Right down the middle. Zimmerman hitting a 247 with his two for two today. Marlon Bird, Brian Schneider to follow. All three have had base hits, at least one today. Supon is getting sharper as the game goes through the middle innings here, it appears. He's starting to spot that fastball a lot better, and that's the key to his success. Again. And Zimmerman never moved. Third strike out of the day for Supon, and that has come total in the last five batters. He's retired six in a row. Join the Nationals Saturday, May 6th. The Pirates in town. It'll be cap night, courtesy of Bud Light. All fans 21 and older will take home a Nationals cap, courtesy of Bud Light. To buy tickets and check out a full list of Nationals giveaways and promotions, visit nationals.com. Nationals have five hits today, but they've only had hits in two innings. Two in the second when they scored one, three in the fourth when they scored one. Well, they just keep taking that low fastball. I don't know why nobody wants to swing at that pitch. Doesn't look like it's overpowering. Looks like it's pretty straight. Marlon Bird, good success against Supon with his one for two today. Ok, 
Base hit to left in the second. Robbed of a hit by Aaron Miles to the right side in the fourth. And this one, a two hopper right at David Eckstein, who got a nice big hop. Pujols never has to go anywhere when no. Eckstein throws. Puts it right there on his numbers every time. And that's another story with our friend Scott Spezio over there. In, in defense for Scott, though, he is a second baseman by trade, and he has that kind of a sidearm delivery, and that doesn't work real well at third base. You've got to come over the top. You want to throw it straight anyway. Base is empty, two outs for Brian Schneider. RBI single last time up with the Nats up 2-1 in the fourth. Supon with a slow breaking ball for a strike. Top of the ninth at Cincinnati now. Astros three, Reds two. Bottom of the ninth at Florida, the Marlins, who are 6-15, and 15, trail 3-1 to one to the Rockies. Right up the middle and right to Eckstein, who has played that way. Brian Schneider scorching the ball, and Jeff Zupon has now retired eight consecutive nets. Bottom of the six. We all live for this. There it is, right on the side of the bag. We go to the bottom of the six. Let's have a look at our in-game box for St. Louis. Juan Encarnacion got the Cardinals going. That was back in the second with a solo homer while the ring was really pelting down to tie the game. And they have base hits from five of the top six spots in their batting order. Jim Edmonds with a big hit, last inning to drive in two, the base is loaded. Jason Bergman now will make his fifth appearance. He'll relieve Zach Day who threw 65 pitches in giving up four runs in five innings. Well, it looked like Zach was going to get out of that fifth inning unscathed, though, but the hustle of David Eckstein got him a base hit, forced the issue, and John Rodriguez had an RBI, and then Jim Edmonds, of course, a two big RBI single, and now it's four to two. A lot of time left, though, but they got to start getting some hits off Supon. Right up the middle, and then Carnacion showing signs of life. After coming into this game batting 212. It's significant to note that his homer went to right and his base hit up the middle. Yeah, he's not pulling the ball. He's got a couple hit uh, pitches that he can handle. He's a high ball hitter. And he'll never use that at bat again, but it was good for that A.B. That day, four runs in five innings, six hits, three walks, a strikeout. Ten ground ball outs of the 15 men he retired. Yeah, I thought for the most part he pitched well. Just that last inning got him in trouble. and The walk in the infield hit. Right. The Edmonds hit is huge, but it shouldn't have happened if uh, Eckstein, Eckstein wasn't hustling so much. Gary Bennett 0 for 2. They must be pinch hitting for soup on this inning of this guy's bunning. Well, Jeff Supon for the most part, a six to seven inning guy at this stage of his career. Is long for the season, his last outing seven when he beat the Pirates. But he had gone five, six, two, and seven. So this is about his time. And it lays off, and it's 2-0. Oh. Well, we'll see now if they turn, take that bun off. Adam a Wainwright, former Brave, came in that J.D. Drew trade along with Jason Marquis. Turned out to be very good for the Cardinals. Yeah, they also got Ray King in that deal. That's right. They've now traded to Colorado to get Miles and Larry Bigby, who's been nothing but injured so far. Well, they may have messed up the strategy there. They may have put something else on either a hit and run or maybe let him swing the bat now at two and oh this is where La Russa tries to pour it on you 
He just took the lead in the last inning. He's going to go right after you and move runners and get things going. Always looking for that little edge. Yep. Another final in. Rockies three, Marlins one in Florida today. So the Florida Marlins at the bottom of the East are now six and sixteen. Bennett lays down a nice one. Nick will tag him. And the runner to second with one out. Aaron Miles, the batter. Yeah, Supan is in the on deck circle. Oh, no, it isn't. That's Gall. Uh, yeah, John, John Gall. Aaron Miles 0 for 1. But a walk with one out in the fifth. Jeff Supan still has his batting helmet on. He's not checking Thinking. out of this game until <laughs> his spot comes up and he's not in there. He's not. Jeff Supan, by the way, shares something in common with our bullpen coach, John Wetland. Supon provides the St. Louis broadcasters a Jeff Supon word of the day that they discuss on the air. You pick something really? out of the dictionary, uh, a word that maybe you haven't heard for, of before. And uh, John Wetland, who's the in resident crossword ex expert on our club, he has a word of the day for the bullpen, too. Supon's word of the day has gotten some publicity as teachers and some other academics have taught his word in the classroom in St. Louis after he pitches. He might have two words today. It could be quality start. There's Joey. We're gonna go ahead and walk the number eight now and get to John Gall. Supon will be out of the game, having pitched six innings, throwing 88 pitches, and retiring the last eight Nationals. Right. Supon walked a couple of guys early. Neither of those heard him, and he struck out three. Homer, a wild pitch, and he's in line for his second win of the year to even his record at 2-2. Two and two. It was a good outing. He didn't feature much in that first couple of innings. That's when you should have pounced on him. He got it back together, started throwing some quality breaking stuff. John Gall just called up two days ago, 0 for 2, a couple of pinch hitting appearances. Nearly missed making this club out of spring training. And a guy can react one of two ways, Tom, when that happens. He can hang his head or he can go to AAA and bang the ball around, and that's what this guy did. Yeah, that's what you have to do. You don't really have a choice. Little tapper, Clayton on the run. Another runner safe at first. As that ball was bounced into no man's land in that triangle between the pitcher, the third baseman, and the shortstop. Yep. Yeah, Zimmerman couldn't get there. Royce Clayton knew he had to hurry, and Gall gets down the line pretty quickly. So another great situation for the Cardinals and Eckstein. He just did everything he could. It wasn't anything, just nothing. He couldn't put enough on that ball from that awkward throwing position. Bases loaded. One out. The 
Nationals are playing at double play depth at least now. The up the middle infielders stay where they are and that's strike one. Tough guy to double up. We saw him run last inning. How does a guy like David Eckstein have four career grand slams? Beats me. He makes contact. His <laughs> last one came August 7th of last year in the bottom of the ninth next door to beat Atlanta. Well, probably gets placed in that position quite a few times. Count so two. Bergman needs the strikeout here. Hard guy to strike out. And that's a breaking ball outside. Boy, the sun is blazing now. Partly cloudy, sunny, rainy. Cloudy, rainy, and now sunny again. And St. Louis has things looking pretty bright for them. Eckstein goes upstairs and Whoa. foul tips. A fastball that was out of the strike zone. Ooh, you don't see this very often. And he was smelling a fly ball, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But he'll usually get on top of this pitch. Boy, he's just over the strike zone. Good pitch by Jason Bergman. And Eckstein is denied. Frank Robinson may want the lefty lefty matchup here. Rodriguez has done damage twice today and the Nationals are further into their bullpen. Left hander Joey Eichen on his way two thirds of an inning for Jason Bergman with a couple of hits and a walk back to St. 4 2 and the Cardinals are trying to put a lid on this one early. They have the bases loaded with one out in the sixth on to New York. And tomorrow night, we'll join you on Masson at 7 o'clock from the Big Apple. Ramon Ortiz will go against Willie Randolph's Mets, who are hot on top of the East. David Wright, Soriano, and that's the play on opening day when Alfonso was safe, but they called him out. So tomorrow night at 7, Ramon Ortiz and Victor Zambrano, Mike O'Connor, John Main on Tuesday. And then we come home to play the Marlins Wednesday, Thursday before the Pirates come in Friday night on DCA 20. To Gucci. 12th appearance of the year for Joey Eichen as they replace Rodriguez with Taguchi. Joey, you throw out that high earned run average. He's pitched well, very aggressive his last few times out. He needs to be real aggressive here and get this guy. And a moment ago, I said one out. There are two. And this will be a two out hit by Taguchi. Bird throws home. And St. Louis has two more. You talked about their extra men today, Tom. Yep. They do a good job. Boy, there was a breaking ball right over the middle of the plate. Taguchi did not miss it. Yeah, the Cardinals have a, a slew of them that come up in certain situations. I'm sure that Tony loved the matchup. Taguchi versus Aishin. And he delivered two-run single. We're going to walk Pujols here. With runners at first and second. Now, that's not that unusual. This doesn't matter. No. They were going to throw the ball out of the strike zone and push these runners up anyway. It'll go as a wild pitch. But it's not that unusual because you have a lefty lefty matchup next. Right. But you don't see that very often. No, you very don't. Intentional walk. Oh, no. It's usually first base open, but yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I guess the Cardinal fans thought he wasn't going to still walk it. <laughs> they're, they're booing. For ball two here. Yeah, nothing's changed really. It's just. Albert walking for the third time today. I know why they boo. Because on weekends, the Cardinals draw fans from 400, 500 miles away and closer. And they didn't drive all the way over here to see Albert Pujols walk three times. You're right. That's a good call. But that's the lay of the land these days for Pujols. And now Edmonds again who singled with the bases loaded last time. And for that not to continue, 
Edmonds is going to have to really pick it up. Oh, he's got a two-run single today. That's good, but his average is just barely over 200. And Scott Rowland's got to come back. Of course, Scott was hitting 313 before he got sick. They need him to protect Albert. Aishin liking that location. Jim Edmonds all locked up, strike one. Edmonds one for three with a two-run single. pitches and look as bad as any batter in baseball sometimes <laughs> and then he's got the capability of doing something spectacular yeah that was a great breaking ball by Joey Aisha that is amazing the way Jim Edmonds plays this game and you're right he'll strike out a bunch in a row and then all of a sudden he'll get hot and put you on your on his back very late emergency swing Schneider has to really slide to his left for that one. Yeah, that was a good play by Brian. That, luckily, that was to his glove side. Pretty good speed out there for St. Louis. Gall to Gucci, who can fly, and Pujols, who's an outstanding base runner. Two runs already home here in the sixth, and a 1 2 count to Edmonds. That should be strike three. Late call by McClelland. Edmonds gone. And this game is into the seventh inning. But St. Louis puts two more on the board. Five in the last two innings. And it's now the Nats down by four. At Bush Stadium in St. Louis. It's all Cardinals 6-2 out hitting the Nats. 9-5. And for Washington, the bottom two in the order. Clayton, then Marlon Anderson, and then the top of the order. So Taguchi stays in to play left field after delivering the two run single. Adam Wainwright the pitcher. <laughs> this is guy has been a prospect in waiting for a number of years. I don't think he's waiting anymore. Look at those numbers. They're incredible. Royce Clayton with a walk and a single today. Now hitting 265. Adam Wainwright is 6'7. They list him at 205. I bet he's closer to 230 right now. Big strong guy from Brunswick, Georgia. Well, that is amazing. You know, you look at that. J.D. Drew trade a couple of years ago, and J.D. just stayed with the Braves for that one year. They get this young arm, Wainwright, and they get a fixture in their starting rotation, and Jason Marquis, and then Ray King was a very serviceable pitcher, too, for a while. Pretty good trade. Breaking ball, and Jeez. Royce Clayton is caught looking. That's called jelly leg. That is some kind of hook right there. Stays on top of it. Look, that's 12 to 6, and Roy's got no chance. Yeah, yeah. Tittle's legs just buckle. I know that feeling well. Well, that's a good hook. Marlon Anderson, the pinch hitter here. One for 14 in that role. That is so unusual for him because he's been so productive his career, and this is easy for Edmonds. The Nationals have not had a hit. Since Royce Clayton back in the fourth, Jeff Supon retired the last eight men he faced. Hey, what? I like that bullpen that uh, the Cardinals are featuring. 
Yeah, the only guy that hasn't gotten it going yet is Isringhausen. Looper looked good yesterday. Thompson. Adam Wainwright looks good. Hancock. Flores, a crafty left-hander. They got it set up pretty good. I know Tony would probably rather have another lefty, only the one left-hander Flores at his disposal right now. Adam Wainwright throughout his career was a starter. He's kind of taken the old-fashioned approach, right? You know, kind of back to the days when you got to the big leagues and you worked in the bullpen until you earned a starting job or one opened up for you. It just doesn't work like that anymore. Everybody is so specialized now. Well, I got a feeling he might start some games before it's over with. Alfonso Soriano 0 for 3 today. Yikes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll start. A 1, 2, 3, 7. Seventh inning stretch time in St. Louis. And the Cardinals are dominating the Nationals now. 6 to 2. Bottom of the seventh here in St. Louis at Bush Stadium, the new Bush Stadium. And the Cardinals now 6 to 2 over the Nationals with three in the fifth and two in the sixth. Ryan Zimmerman got the Nats going early. Jim Edmonds has hurt the Cardinals, or rather hurt the Nationals, on a two-run single back in the fifth inning. And they've done a good job of hitting with men on base today. The Nationals haven't had anybody on base since the fourth inning. No doubt about it. So Taguchi, also with a big two-run single last inning. You know, it all goes back to that four-pitch walk to Aaron Miles and the hustle of David Eckstein as he beat out the infield hit, and that set up the uh, last five runs that the Cardinals have scored. Felix Rodriguez on for the Nats. It'll be his team leading 15th appearance. Spizio, Encarnacion, and Bennett for St. Louis in the seventh. The Nationals have had their last 11 batters retired. Mm -hmm. be some series next weekend when St. Louis goes to Houston after a couple of games in Cincinnati. Nationals back into the East this week for four games, two in New York and two at home with the Marlins. This one high in the air to right center and the call by Guillen for the first out. There's Encarnacion who's had a big day. The only time the Nationals have retired him is when he blistered one to the left of Ryan Zimmerman who forced him out with a couple of men on base in the fourth. Mets have added a run. Bottom of the eighth in Atlanta, Braves eight, New York five. Milwaukee all over the Cubs again, six to nothing. Carlos Lee has hit his 10th home run. And if Greg Maddox isn't pitching, the Cubs are in trouble. Seems that way, doesn't it? It is that way. Oof. Five and oh. And that's Carlos Zambrano today. Who that came in 0 and 1 with a 3.94. He might be the best pitcher in baseball who hardly ever is around to get a decision. He has more no decisions than any pitcher I can think of over the last three or four years. You kind of wonder why. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it is not his own doing, but I think some of it is. A guy with a 97 mile an hour fastball insists sometimes on throwing nothing but breaking stuff. 3 0 to Encarnacion. Cubs have kicked the ball around a bit in that game. He gave up four unearned runs of those six. Yeah, that loss of Derek Lee is really going to hurt them a lot. It may not show itself right now. Nick Johnson over to have a look, a reach, Oops. 
And he just couldn't get to the barrier in time. Yeah, not knowing this field, I think there was a little bit more room than Nick anticipated. See, right there, he's, he's kind of looking at the ball, and then he picks up the rail, and then a little bit too late. I did that one time when I got hit right in the head. Ball shot up in the stands about 30 rows, hit right on that beanie. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was a much more difficult play. Of course it was. Clayton charges. Royce will throw out Encarnacion for the second out. No, actually, I was 0 for 4 against Gidry with three strikeouts and a pop-up. And the guy hit an old Comiskey. You remember the old cement? You know, there was so, it was very... The warning track and everything was so uneven, and they had the cement wall right there. I ran to the cement wall down the right field corner, looked up, and I looked up too late. The ball hit me right in the head, shot up in the stands, and everybody thought it hit the cement wall. <laughs> nope. Something a lot harder than that. So you do have something in common with Jose Canseco. Uh, yes. Very, yeah. Aces empty two outs. Gary Bennett, 0 for 2 with the sacrifice. And the Coneheads. Top of the eighth, Bidro, Johnson, Guillen for the Nationals. The top four hitters in the Nats lineup today are 0 for 12 with one walk. Yeah, they've had some opportunities, especially Soriano's had some chances to do well. Two balls and a strike to Gary Bennett. And Felix was able to challenge him. Clayton straight ahead on the run. And a 1 2 3 seventh inning for Felix Rodriguez. 2, 3, and 4 due up for the Nats. It's getting late on a Sunday in St. Louis. They call it a sea of red here in St. Louis. Lots of red seats, and the folks wear a lot of, lot of red to the ball games. And on a Sunday afternoon in St. Louis. How about some Wednesday nights at home? They're college nights at RFK. Bring your college ID to the box office. Claim your upper view outfield seats only five dollars college night with the nationals every wednesday at rfk how about some offense how about some runs top of the eighth the nets have not had a hit since the fourth jose vidro's over two three for 14 in the series we thought the offense was coming alive with a couple of runs and five hits in the first four innings jeff supon shut the door and adam wainwright is trying to keep it that way Hmm. That's a real good changeup right there. Well, he turned that one over. I, I don't know if that was a fork ball or not, but he's got a 90-plus fastball. Excellent hook, as we saw last inning, and then the changeup to complement that. Jose has to do well just to hack that breaking pitch foul. Adam Wainwright, 6'7", 200-plus. Braves took him in the first round six years ago, the 29th player taken at the end of that first round. High and tight to Vidro. And the gun says 94. And him reaching. Right where Eckstein's playing. Eckstein on target. And that's 12 in a row set down by the St. Louis pitchers, Supon and Adam Wainwright. Well, Tom, we had some high hopes for this series. There was a winnable game on Thursday, a winnable game last night. I don't know if today's game goes in that category right now. Well, not right now it doesn't, but it certainly looked that way. You know, it wasn't for that one play in the fifth inning, the walk to Miles and then Eckstein's hustle. And the big two-out hit, uh, you know, it, it could be a different story right now, but it, it isn't. The Cardinals have 
come up with big hits, and they're pitching well right now. Pitching great, as a matter of fact. Nick Johnson, three for 15 in the series now. St. Louis has really cooled off some of the Nats' big bats over the last few days. We've seen some flashes with Zimmerman homering in two of the last three games. He end yesterday. But not a whole lot from the middle of the batting order on a consistent basis. Yeah, it just seems like that, you know, if you say hitting is contagious, it really hasn't been that way for the Nationals this year. It just seems like there's one or two guys, maybe three in a ball game, and another three guys the next day, and it, it's just not a, uh, a real united front, I guess I could say. Two balls and a strike. Nick saw a pitch up, and he was hacking hard. Finals starting to roll in now from the American League. Yankees beat Toronto 4-1. Tampa Bay 5-4 over the Red Sox. Kurt Schilling Ooh. got the loss, his first of the year. Scott Kazmir. The record of 3-2 and two as he wins it for Tampa Bay. One of the top prospects of the Mets that was traded two years ago. Tigers, as we told you earlier, beat Minnesota 6-0 behind Kenny Rogers' eight shutout innings with two hits. Detroit's a real good ballpark for Kenny Rogers to pitch in. A lot of space out there. To, and he will throw a lot of ground balls, too. Nick Johnson battling Adam Wayne right here with one out in the eighth. It's it well, but fouled the other way. In the National League, they're in the ninth now at Atlanta. 8-5 Braves. Milwaukee 7, Cubs nothing in the fifth. Houston has beaten Cincinnati 3-2. Rockies have beaten Florida 3-1. Bottom of the ninth at Pittsburgh. Phillies lead the Bucks 5-1. No score early in San Francisco. The Diamondbacks are there. Nick Johnson pops it up left side. It'll be out of play again. And a breaking ball, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the clock was a little out of his strike zone. Yeah, just a little. That was nasty. Well, he's got a slider and a curveball and the changeup to go with that good fastball. Nationals Eight. desperately need base runners. And Nick is really hanging tough in this at bat. Yeah, I think in the next uh, year or so, you're going to see this guy in the starting rotation. He's just got too much talent. You can see it. He's got four really good pitches. You know, as a reliever, usually they move a guy to the bullpen because he's only got two pitches. He's got, this guy's got four good ones. And Nick wins the battle to work for the one-out walk. The Nats have their first base runner in four innings. And we'll see what Jose Guillen can do here with one out in the eighth. I'll tell you what, you better get this guy early in the count when he throws you that fastball, but right-handed hitters especially. You get a right-hander, he gets two strikes on you, forget it. It's like that's, that curveball reminds me a lot of Bly Levins, the one that he threw the Soriano into yeah. uh, Royce Clayton. You just don't see too many vertical curveballs anymore. Uh-uh. Two for 16 in the series for Guillen. He went up ripping, and that's outside the bag at third. And once again, I, I got to compliment Dave Duncan on the work he's done with a young pitcher like R Wainwright. Jason Marquis, another example. And I think Sidney Ponson, remember the first the, the night we were here Thursday? It seems like a long time ago, but Ponson looked better in that game than in any start that I'd ever seen him with the Baltimore Orioles. I mean, really looked like he was on top of everything. All his pitching was working, great mound presence. Nearly seven innings, two runs, five hits. And Dave Duncan does that to guys. Young and old pitchers. 0-1 to Guillen. 
Jose lays off. Counts even, 1 1. He's got two kinds of fastballs, too a four seamer and a two seamer. Wainwright does. That's settled. He's got too many pitches. He's got five. <laughs> This one high in the air heading for the right side seats. May not get there and nobody will get to it. That was a long run for a lot of people. As Tom mentioned earlier in this series, a little more foul territory in this ballpark than in a lot of the new parks. Now it's a little slim on that side. As you look over to the left field side, you can see it's a little wider over there. When you get down to where the stands jut out, almost Fenway style. There. Yeah, very much like Fenway. It turns those seats back toward the infield. One ball and two strikes. Guillen gets jammed and pops it up. Near the on-deck circle. And dancing around Whoa. the equipment is Gary Bennett. There was a pine tar rag and a bat and who knows whatever else down there. And he wasn't getting a whole lot of help. Well, that's a good job by Bennett hustling. Really, Spezio should call him off on that play. It's a much easier catch for the third baseman than it is the catcher. Look at it. everything's coming back to him. You got all that equipment on. It's up to Zimmerman whether this inning continues or not. Ryan's had a good day, two for three with a homer, a single, two runs scored. And a breaking ball that hangs, but way out of the strike zone. It's over in Baltimore. Mariners beat the Orioles four to three. That puts Baltimore back to the 500 mark. A badly needed win for Seattle. They're in the basement in the West. Right now, the American League East and the National League Central are where the over 500 teams are. Yep. Two-zero. Zimmerman was pumping. He was right over that pitch, and he fouled it straight back. La Russa, number one active manager, number three all time. A 199 career hitter with the Cubs. <laughs> Zimmerman hopes it gets out of play, and it will. Yeah, but it was a hard 199. <laughs> Seven major league RBIs in 132 games. Now, is that a manager in the making or what? Yes. Manager uh, that should have been managing a long time ago. <laughs> this is his 11th year here. This is amazing. Look at 29th year as manager. Jeez. That's incredible. Managed Tom Pachorek in Chicago, folks. He did. 2 2. And Zimmerman continues to battle Adam Wainwright. Yeah. A lot of. People say that the not so good players make the better managers because they concentrate on all the aspects of the game. The game doesn't come easy for them, so they have to really study it. Lasorda. Yeah. You know, none of those guys, Earl Weaver, Sparky Anderson, they weren't good players. Great managers, though. There might be one in the making down in Florida with Joe Girardi. Now, he was a pretty good player. Yeah, Joe's a good player. But he was a guy who's a great student of the game. Yes. Lots of catchers go on to manage. Of course, Torrey was a good player, too. A very good player. Almost great. Uh-oh. Zimmerman looks at a curveball, and the Nationals are gone in the eighth. They've stranded six. One base runner since the fourth. It's all Cardinals here in St. Louis. There are some baseball fans watching from the windows of the Gateway Arch. A little less than a mile away, 630 feet in the air. 
And even higher than that because this playing surface is well below street level in St. Louis. It's the bottom of the eighth. Aaron Miles will lead off. The pitcher yesterday, Jason Marquis, will pinch hit. And then the top of the order. I don't know how Skip Schumacher feels about that. Their other remaining left-handed bat on the bench. Well. Tony La Russa has always done some unorthodox things. It's very unorthodox. You're right. Remember with Oakland when he was uh, giving the pitchers three innings at a time? At one stretch, he was just, the bullpen was pitching in tandem with some of the starters, and he planned on using three pitchers to get through every game. I think about two weeks later, that changed back to the traditional mode. Yeah, he used to bat Mark McGuire leadoff when Mark had a bad knee. He would have one at bat when they were on the road, and then he would leave the game. He batted Matt Morris eighth on the day McGuire hit home runs number 69 and 70 to get Mark more men on base when he batted. Aaron Miles is on base for the third time today. And Jason Marquis will be the pinch hitter. He's scrappy. Let's see what he's doing here. He's probably going to bunt. He's one for one as a pinch hitter. Aaron Miles, a pesky little guy, too, boy. I think that was a good move getting him. Two scoreless innings for Adam Wainwright with one walk and three strikeouts. Glad he's out of there. Career pinch hitting 333. Anything 250 <laughs> or better is considered very good. Oh, yeah. Looking to bunt, pulls it back. They did present him with the Silver Slugger Award for being the best hitting pitcher in the National League last year. Well, he is a terrific athlete. They use him as a pinch runner, too. They used him at that, at that as a uh, brave also. I remember him pinch hitting in Atlanta. He hit 310 last year. A pitcher. <laughs> I, tell you, I watched him in batting practice. He's got a great swing. I mean, you wouldn't know that he was a pitcher by watching him take batting practice. Checking out his bat now to see if there's anything coming out of there. That, that little carved out thing, I think that's one of the reasons why the bats explode so much. They do that to balance the bat. But when they do, if you hit one close to that, to the end, that thing just shatters. Yeah, there's no mass there. Nothing there, yeah. And my personal preference would be to be sitting here in the eighth inning of a ball game talking about Nationals hitters and offense and pinch hitters and things happening. But today there's been very little of that. A run on two hits in the second, three runners stranded up to that point, and a run on three hits in the fourth, two stranded then, and then the Nats did not have a base runner until a one-out walk in the eighth. Now Marquis walks. <laughs> Two on, nobody out, top of the order, X time. Then Taguchi and then Pujols. Yeah, we can point to all those things that happened in the fifth inning and the, you know, the, the walk to Miles and then Eckstein's hustle, but you're right, Bob. There's an absolutely nothing happened since the fourth inning, since Snyder's RBI single. That rope he hit down in the corner, it looked like everybody was starting to swing the bat pretty good at, against Supan. And then after that, there has just been absolutely nothing going offensively for the Nats. Brad Thompson will pitch the ninth. St. Louis will be up by at least four. Here's Eckstein, two on, nobody out. This guy's a good bunter. Led the American League on a couple of different occasions and sacrifices when he was with the Angels. No 
probably become a 100-100 man this year. Career stolen bases and hit by pitches. <laughs> yeah, Started the year with 93 and 89 oh, respectively. Oh, well, he's got it. Deadens that ball nicely. Rodriguez with the bare hand on target to Vidro. It'll go one four in the sacrifice. And it's very simple here. You retire to Gucci, you walk Pujols, and then you pitch to Edmonds again. Maybe. We'll see. Well, one thing's for sure, you're not going to walk to Gucci. Not intentionally. <laughs> I like this guy, to Gucci. I mean, he's... You know, he plays the heck out of the outfield. It's like having an extra center fielder out there when he's playing left. And he's scrappy up at the plate. The more, he's one of those guys, the more you watch play, the more you like him. Infield in, way upstairs. Cardinals trying to pour it on here in the eighth. Already ahead, six to two. Bases loaded, or rather second and third one out. And if they get to Gucci, the bases will be loaded shortly. And the count's even, one ball, one strike. Albert Pujols has walked three times today, once intentionally. And now more times than anybody in the league at 27. Albert Pujols has struck out seven times this year in 80 official at bats. That's something. Looked like a good one. Fastball tailing up and in. Caught the corner. And it's one ball, two strikes. Rodriguez to Taguchi, and he steps off looking at the third base runner, Aaron Miles. Jason Marquis, 90 feet behind him. And so Taguchi came to St. Louis from Japan in 2002. Some of the Cardinal brass were astounded at how overmatched he was by major league pitching. And he, you know, he was. Yeah, after 10 years as a frontline player in Japan, he had to go to the minor leagues and figure out how to catch up with pitching here in the good old U.S. of A. Yeah. And he figured out a way over the next two years to do it. And he's still in baseball at the age of 37. Well, the Japanese method of hitting is a lot different. They wrap the bat a lot more. They got longer swings. And I think that was the thing he had to work on the most is shorten up on that swing. And he, he sure looks like he has done that over the last couple of years. Plus, he's choking up on the bat a little bit. One and two with one out. In the air to right field. That's where they're playing him. And Taguchi will have himself another RBI. Aaron Miles cruising home. And now it's 7-2 St. Louis. Tom Paturik is usually pretty accurate with his keys to the game. So let's see how you're doing in the eighth <laughs> inning. Well, I think the stand-ins are performing has been the key for these guys today. Look at Taguchi coming off the bench with three RBIs. 
And the guy he came in for, Rodriguez, had a big RBI and a couple hits also. So La Russa gets the most out of his bench. And nobody Stupon. got on for Guillen today. You know what? That's true. The two batters in front of him, the three batters in front of him, 0 for 11. And, of course, Supon was off early and then on. Yeah. So Soup's on over the last couple of innings, and he minimized the damage. He could have gotten hit a lot worse than that, but just two runs allowed. He stands to win the game. Probably Albert Pujols' last at bat of April. And pitchers will be dancing in the streets everywhere around the league. It's inside 2-0. The Nats in the ninth will have Bird, Schneider, and Clayton do up against Brad Thompson of the Cardinals. St. Louis has one of the best home records in baseball. They're trying to make it 12 and 4 today. That would match Houston for the best record in baseball at home. Three and zero. Oh. I'll let the crowd tell you where this pitch is. <laughs> Please do. See, they're happy. Yeah, they just cheered a strike. Yeah. Albert's an interesting guy. He's not going to swing at a fastball he doesn't like just because it's 3-0. I think Tom hit it on the head yesterday. He's probably got the green light any time. Oh, absolutely. 3-1 now. Oops. But, you know, he's not the guy. He won't swing at a pitch outrageously out of the strike zone like that. But he doesn't need a strike to hit it out of the ballpark. I don't know. I'm not so sure that that pitch that he hit out yesterday against John Rouch was in the strike zone. Might have been slightly out. But he's that good. Just for my own personal information, I've been timing Felix Rodriguez during this inning. He normally takes somewhere between 30 to 35 seconds between every pitch. That's a lot. at the 22nd mark right now. And that is, of course, until the time the ball is actually released from the hand. No balls, one strike. And about 37 seconds or so that time. Now Edmonds fouls went out of play. Takes a little longer when Felix has to rub up a new ball. For every pitcher it does. Well, you look at Edmonds, the opportunities he's going to have to drive in runs with everybody going around Pujols. He and Roland both should have banner years. Ball, two strikes. You know, the one thing that happens when the pitcher works that slow is the defense. They get kind of complacent, too. Instead of being on their toes, they'll be more apt to be on their heels. Tough to make a play when the guy's not working quick. Two balls, two strikes. 
Runners at first and third and two outs. And Edmonds fouls off another. Imagine when everything is done, Jim Edmonds will hit, I don't know if he's going to hit 300 this year, but he'll hit his 30 home runs, drive in his 100 runs, play great defense in center field. Fouled off 400 pitches. At least. They're in the seventh inning now at Chicago. Brewers seven, Cubs nothing. American League, Oakland all over Kansas City, 12 to 5 in the eighth. And the White Sox ahead of the Angels, 3 2 in the fifth. Jim Edmonds went over 1,000 RBIs this season. Yep. Well, he's been a fine, great player. 290. After all that, an RBI hit up the middle, and now it's 8 to 2. Pujols going to third. The throw is offline. And St. Louis has a two run eighth inning here. And that's a pitch hitter who was a pitcher that Rodriguez walked earlier this inning. Yeah, well, he got a slider, and this one hangs over the middle of the plate and up, and Edmonds doesn't miss it. Pujols always hustling. Goes from first to third. He goes first to third as well as anybody in the league, really. So they're just disappointing last five innings of this game. Yeah, the Nats really had something going early. And then no base runners from the fourth until the eighth. Yeah, they've turned this thing around. Yeah, for, through four, last four innings it actually is the, is been all St. Louis momentum everything energized fans hard to hit the ball fair against Felix <laughs> a lot of funny swings lots of foul balls yeah. here this pitch count for two innings could be approaching 50 very shortly. Yeah, 18 balls, 22 strikes. Not a good ratio. Two walks, two hits in the inning, two sacrifices for the outs. One a bunt, one a fly ball. And now the count's one and two. This ball down the line and right. Pujol scores. Edmonds around third. Jose Oquendo will hold him. And the Cardinals are pouring it on now. It's 9-2. to two. Well, it looked like a sinker down. Spezio just went out and got it. Ripped it, boy, that was a way. He just hooked it into that corner. So that's going to be it for Rodriguez. He goes one and two thirds. He worked a one, two, three, seventh inning. And then a leadoff single, a couple of walks, and two more hits here in the eighth. It's all Cardinals now, 9 2, and Felix is 9 2 St. Louis. The Nationals once led in this game, 2 to 1. That was back in the fourth inning. As Brian Schneider drove in a run, that's been the extent of the offense the rest of the day. And it's been all St. Louis. Three in the fifth, two in the sixth, and now three more here in the eighth. They're getting their bats ready for a road trip to Cincinnati and Houston. Well, depending on what kind of pitching they face, they should uh, have some fun hitting in those ballparks. John Brauchon, John's had a real good year, 188 earned run average.
Juan Encarnacion, the batter. He did some early damage to the Nats. Tying the game up in the second. With a solo home run to right, only his second home run of the year. And a base hit that got a two-run rally started in the sixth. Brad Thompson's been warming up for about an hour and a half to pitch the ninth inning in the St. Louis bullpen. I wonder how many pitches, done. how many he's thrown out there. It's got to be tough for a relief pitcher. This one is backing out of play. And for John Roush of the Nationals, this will be his 12th appearance of the season. Gave up the Albert Pujols homer in the eighth here yesterday. And the count is one and two on Juan Encarnacion. He evidently stopped on a high fastball, two and two. Got him swinging on a breaking ball away. The Cardinals send eight men to the plate in the eighth. Three of them score, and to the ninth inning we go. 9-2 St. Louis. Top of the ninth inning, the Nationals are about to lose three out of four in St. Louis, barring an incredible ninth inning here in St. Louis. MateNationals.com, your online source for information on the hometown team. Go to Nationals.com for updated news on the team, promotional days, and special offers national.com where baseball is always on Bob Carpenter Tom Pachura gets the top of the ninth in St. Louis and Brad Thompson is trying to close it out for the Cardinals they have a new first baseman for an inning here and there and that's Hector Luna there's Brad Thompson well, he's got good numbers, too. A lot of these young kids coming out of this bullpen, hard-throwing, big, strong right-handers who are really doing the job for Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Spezio was running for the ball or away from the barrel, which came hurtling toward him. I would have been running from the bat. Look at that. My goodness. You are constantly amazed. I, I am. By these bats these days, Tom. Nothing at all like the instruments of destruction you guys used to wield. Well, I don't know. It, it's a, you just didn't see that that often. I mean, that, he may have hit that on a good part of the bat. I don't know. But the exploding bat trick has just been used all year long. I mean, it's getting worse and worse. Marlon Bird is aboard, hit by the pitch. And the Nationals have their first leadoff man aboard since Zimmerman's single back in the fourth. Next up is Brian Schneider. Ryan has hit in four consecutive games now. One hit per game during that time, but got to start somewhere, and he does have four RBIs in this series. Brings his season total up to eight. Right Boy. side, he has another base hit. Miles couldn't quite reach it. All right. Bird stops at second, and the Nats have two on. Nobody out here in the ninth. Well, if anything out of this game, it looks like Brian Schneider is getting a better stroke going for himself. Bob, he, he really turned on a couple of balls today, made solid contact. They've been jamming him with the fastball. Watch how he gets the head of the bat out front this time, rips it by the diving second baseman. That's good. And his last time up before that, he had a line drive at the shortstop. So three good at bats now for Bryant. Royce Clayton's had a base hit in two trips with a walk today. And as we mentioned earlier, it's the bottom of the order, starting with Zimmerman in the five hole that has done, well, all the hitting today. Not one hit from the top four guys. I have to give those four guys a chance to hit this inning. 
Top four hitters 0 for 13 today. Daryl Ward will bat in the pitcher spot next. Crowd of 39,383, about at least half of it gone now. Very quiet here. They're just waiting for a chance to stand with two outs and get this thing over with. We'll see how long the Nationals can delay that effort. Royce Clayton's had a pretty good series. He's four for 11 with three walks. So he's been on base seven times here in St. Louis, right next door to where he used to play for the Cardinals. Breaking ball, that was a beauty on the outside corner. Stays on top of it. Boy, that was right there at the knees outside corner. He just aced him with that one. And he goes with a fastball and gets a double play ball. Eckstein, Miles, and Luna, 6-4-3. And the Nationals are down to their final out of the weekend. Thirtieth double play by the St. Louis defense this year. Right at Eckstein, and he knows what to do. Well, that was just ham and jam right there for he and Miles. Darrell Ward will bat now for the Nats in the ninth. Well, another one of these series when you can look back and think of what could have been a winnable game hmm. Thursday, a winnable game yesterday. As it turns out, this is the only game of the series the Nationals were, quote, out of. Yeah, the last four innings have been a disaster. Thompson dropping that one down into the dirt on the left-handed hitting Ward. Change up. Yeah, all these guys have got a lot of assortments of pitches. And yeah, they look a lot alike, too, on the mound. They're all big, strong. That, in the end, that may not help them as much because it's almost like facing the same pitcher over and over. When you look at Thompson, you look at Wainwright, you look at Hancock, Looper, Isringhouse, and they're all pretty much the same guy. Yeah, Just the only thing I see suspect about them is their left-handed side. Rincon is on the DL. Randy Flores relatively inexperienced. They're not a great situational left-handed bullpen. That's true. But they do have good arms coming out of there, and, you know, you just, Tony, I'm sure, and Dave Duncan have figured out that they're not going to take a lefty just because he's left-handed. Three balls and a strike. Daryl Ward trying to keep the Nats alive here in the ninth. Runner at third and a foul Ouch. tip. to St. Louis. Three and two to Darrell Ward. And he flies one out to left center. Taguchi is there. St. Louis takes three out of four from the Nationals. Winning on Thursday, six to two. The Nats with the eight to three verdict on Friday. A two to one heartbreaker yesterday for the cards and they win it nine to two going away today. The bullpen got the job done after Edmonds and company drove in the runs. We're back to St. Louis after these hits of baseball in St. Louis today and the Cardinals in their nice new home. They're now 12 and four. They beat the Nats nine to two. They stayed with Washington early in the game when the Nats broke out on top with the Zimmerman home run. And Tom, the middle innings, I, you know, just what happened to this ball club at that time? No offense, and the pitching was really difficult. Yeah, no question about it, Bob. When you got to that fifth inning, that was really the key for the uh, St. Louis as they came back and turned this momentum on this ball game completely around in their favor. Supon was able to survive. He got the victory.
but the uh, Nats couldn't get any offense in the fifth inning really let, it, let them down. Eckstein, this is a big play right here. Two out, Eckstein beats it out. In, a lot of guys are going to be thrown out on that particular play. And then Rodriguez singles in a run. And then Jimmy Edmonds, a two-run single. And that was pretty much it. That was the, the Nats couldn't do anything after that, and they just kept adding on at, from that point. Well, St. Louis is a good ball club. You can see why they've been in the playoffs almost every year. The World Series two years ago. If you're in a close game, it's almost like they know how to find a way to win. And I think that's something the Nationals are going to have to develop because you play a lot of one and two run ball games as the season goes on. Let's have a look at our PNC play of the game. It's as easy as PNC. And with Encarnacion batting, Ryan Zimmerman again came up big at third base. Yeah, and he saved another run there. He made two great plays at third base. Zimmerman was terrific uh, from a defensive standpoint. But one good thing, Brian Schneider starts swinging the bat while he hit the ball hard three times and got two hits. Yeah, now the bottom of the batting order is starting to produce a tough day for the top. Bye, Tom. Bye, Bob. Tom will rejoin us in New York tomorrow night. We're back with some final words from St. Louis. Well, a day in St. Louis, a Sunday for baseball. The Nats had hoped to grab a win, maybe get a split in this four-game series, but the Nats just couldn't get it done. Too much Albert Pujols, Jeff Supon, and the Cardinals today. For Tom Pachorek, I'm Bob Carpenter. The final score, 9-2 St. Louis. 7 o'clock tomorrow night on Masson. Ortiz and Zambrano. This has been a presentation of the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network. See you Monday.